before that, uh, you were a student of Cardinal Grinmeier. Can you tell us briefly about your teacher? <laughs> Uh, in fact, I collaborated with him uh, since '86. I was not really a, uh, he was not my teacher in that way, but I worked with him. But of course, I learned a lot from him. And I would say I admire that he, first of all, read an author, uh, an author studied it from the very beginning till the end simply read and make made notes and then he, he uh, tried uh, to get all the relevant um, secondary literature and pondered about uh, on, on this subject and then wrote down little by little so in a way I think he was he was really open to discover what it is what is in and to be strict to the text and then present it in an understanding way so he could uh, he could uh, find out also the original meaning the original idea of some of some authors which were not received then later but to do justice to them to their own view because uh, this may also enrich our our understanding also that you continue this project yeah, yeah. so uh, why it's so important to continue this project what's its aim its mission to work I am continuing the work of Goldmeier on Christ and Christian tradition the aim uh, of these volumes or is that he would say um, we have to bring out the picture of Christ of every local church uh, how they view on it um, in, and in a lot of literary genres, not only dogmatic treatises, but also sermons, even monastic rules, or homilies, whatever, in order to get how they perceived Christ, what he meant for them, and to, and to embed it also in the, in the current philosophical background the, the historical circumstances in order to really get um, their picture and I think the, the, the project then was that he said for instance um, before the rise of Islam he wanted to show that or at least that what is, uh, was the hypothesis that before the rise of Islam uh, the, uh, the apostolic kerygma was preserved, although in different languages, in different terminologies. But this has to be shown. This cannot be uh, um, presumed in advance. Um, and uh, so he has had this vision of this Orbis Christologicus around the Mediterranean uh, to show that nevertheless the, the, the schisms, the original kerygma, the original um, message was kept and this may this has of course uh, um, an impact to the for the discussion with other churches which um, uh, did not accept uh, Chalcedon for instance and it is good to do a, a solid research in order to know yeah how far you can go and how you can understand and and what are the dangers to be avoided so that you really do uh, the, the solid research uh, for a good judgment in these questions. You have visited Russia for many times <laughs> and you saw, saw our theologians, you talked to them. Yeah. Now you can see that our theological science and especially patristic studies yeah. in the um, uh, stage of Resurrection. Can you give us your opinion, opinion of patristic uh, 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 research from the West? I really appreciate this, uh, yeah, resurrection, this renewal uh, of studies, which is so important, and also uh, the Orthodox tradition is so near to the Fathers, to the patristic tradition. So, 
it's uh, very useful to, to discover the richness of, of the fathers. Um, and to live, really to live from it and in also in reflection, philosophical background and, and in order to better understand your own faith. So that's uh, a very, I, I'm happy to see that there is a development that is a, a, a very, um, a, a very quick uh, uh, development and I'm, I'm really happy about it. So I think, yeah, everybody has to make its way and especially since you are in, in close uh, contacts also with other scholars, I think this, this helps a lot to avoid <laughs> misinterpretation. I think it's also good that the different churches um, are really dealing with their own tradition. For instance, the Oriental Orthodox churches, they see themselves as, the, as those who transmit the tradition of their fathers. And I would strongly recommend that they really study it and do it in a scholarly way, because we need also the witnesses of, of the uh, of these fathers seen through their own tradition. Uh, and the last question. Uh, since fathers lived many, many years ago, centuries ago, yeah. what can they say to modern people? I must say that the reflections of the fathers often are very deep, often deeper than things, theological books you read today. Especially, I can just say, especially for for Trinitarian theology or Christology. These are very, the long uh, discussions over centuries of very subtle discussions, but you can learn a lot from it. Where are the dangers, where are uh, limits of your understanding, and this can correct your own, own faith, I think. And they uh, tried to live their faith, and they were also some of them, of course, were very near to the origins uh, to, of, of, uh, of our tradition. So it's, it's worthwhile to read it and it gives you also courage to, to go your own way as a, as a Christian.